I just bought an expandable, adjustable golf club. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. You know, I like to golf every now and then, and it's not always that convenient to take a full set of golf clubs with me all the time even though I do. So I picked up this, it's by Divnik Golf. Now this golf club has been around for a very long time. I've been intrigued by it for a very long time and I finally just bought one. First of all, this is not the first adjustable golf club. It's basically supposed to be a whole bag of golf clubs, but in a single club just like this. It has some interesting features and some pro and cons and I'm going to modify it, but I wanna give you a tour through the club itself. And actually what spurred me on to buy this is that there's a new company that's coming out with an adjustable nine in one club and it's called Urquart and I actually ordered one so it's not coming till later this year but it kind of gave me the itch to try out something like this and see if it's actually even playable. That's what I'm kind of curious about. And if it is, then it's something I can keep in my car, something I can travel with just in the off chance that I'm at a driving range, a golf course, or maybe I want to hit some balls at the driving range after work. Whatever it might be, I can have it with me. So first of all, what we get here is the Divnik Golf Club itself. This is its stock form here. And what you can see is it has like this wrapped tacky Mac type of grip. It looks very standard, but I think it's just a little bit longer than a standard grip. So if I just take this standard golf pride grip and put them next to each other, you can see it's just a smidge longer than a regular grip. And that's because if you want to grip down on it, choke up on it, you know, for those shorter shots, then you can certainly do that. Now, this is one of those things that I'm going to change. Spoiler alert. Tacky Macs are very tacky and they've been around a long, long time. Now, now you also get the steel shaft and what I want to show you here is that this is extendable and you actually say you're supposed to do it with some force so that it locks into place but it's actually three pieces so what you can see is we have this top piece right here with the grip we have the center piece right here and then we have the lower end piece that goes into the head itself now I'm not sure that this is a 0.370 inch hosel right here we are going to find out and I'm actually going to figure out what the club head weight of this club is as well but we have three pieces here and when they are fully extended kind of like a, a telescoping rod they will lock into each other now I would say that my issue here is that I'm worried about twisting this and less about it compacting and what I will say is that if I fire this thing out, extend it the way they say, which is just to kind of cast it, I will say it locks in pretty well. And can I twist it by hand? Not really. It seems to have some sort of spline or something. I mean, I can feel it rocking just a smidge, torquing maybe a millimeter or something. I can kind of feel that, but it's not letting me twist it. I'm really actually quite surprised on that. Now, I also will say I took some swings with this and I was hitting it into very hard frozen ground and nothing would break it. Uh, I was grounding out the head into the ground and I was expecting that it might break, that it might break the tension that the shaft is under, but it wasn't. And so that's gonna be as hard as hitting a golf ball. So I'm actually pretty impressed with this. Given how long Divnik has been in business and selling this with the telescoping shaft, I'm not surprised that it's pretty dialed in. So that's actually a pretty cool innovation because I would have thought you would have needed a boxed shaft of some sort just to make sure that it doesn't twist. Now, what you have to do is when you collapse this, it has a little steel dot here on the end and you actually don't want to put your fingers here. What they recommend is grabbing it by this, kind of like the heel of the club here and then slamming it into the ground, kind of banging it into the ground and that will kind of break it loose. Now you don't want to get your fingers low here because what you can see is that last part of the shaft goes over the hosel here and has quite a bit of play in it, right? And so what happens is if your fingers are down here, they're gonna get shaved off by this. So it's not exactly idiot proof. So it shouldn't be in my hands at all. But you can absolutely kind of carve out a little piece of your finger. So you don't wanna do that. I think the tendency is to be, grab this part and use it as the hammer here, but you don't wanna get your finger up here because then your finger will get chewed up just like that. So what they say is to grab it up like this, do it however you want. I'm not your mama, but I think I'd almost do it like this and just kind of pound it down. Now, in its compact form like this, I'd call this maybe 18 inches. And so this is gonna travel with you pretty well. Now it's pretty loose and floppy when it's compacted, but I was kind of mystified about who would buy this, but I was actually reading some comments and one of the guys was mentioning, he lives in a studio apartment in the city, doesn't own a car, likes to golf, has to take a bus to the public golf course, and it's only a par three because limited space in cities. And so something like this is great because it doesn't take up a lot of space in his home. He can travel on the bus with it. He can play his par three. It's got all the clubs he needs and he comes right back home. And it's also not super expensive. Now I will say that this thing was on sale. It's about 200 bucks 
bucks. That's actually not super cheap, but it's not super expensive for a single club. And given everything that it does, I think it's actually a fair price. Now, what makes this unique here is the little twisting system. As you can see, this is what the face looks like. It's cavity back, kind of a game improvement type of iron, says Divnik right there. You can actually get a little medallion made. I don't know, for 20 bucks and have it put in there. So if you want your corporate logo, those types of things, it can go right in there. This is like a cast piece right here. So it's a little bit textured. The front looks like every other club that you might know. It's kind of this matte finish here, the white lower line. As I said, I've been hitting into the ground. So I've got a little dirt in there that didn't come like that. And then the adjustment here is actually pretty interesting. Now this is a polymer little switch here. And what you do is when you want to adjust this is you turn it almost one rotation like that. And now it's loosened it up. It's got a little bolt here that's a little bit spring loaded so as you twist it it kind of pulls and then it locks back into the gears now this little polymer here is replaceable you can actually take flathead screwdriver and pop it off if you need to adjust it maybe it's not tightening down in the right position i think they make it out of polymer to keep the weight down it's a very strong polymer as far as i can tell kind of like a heckler and coke vp9 lower so it should last a pretty long time but i have heard if you have problems with this if it gets loose if it breaks off you should just let Divnik know and they will mail you a new one and then you can just press it on. Now, one of the things that I will say is when it's loose like this and you adjust, you actually have to kind of go back and forth sometimes to get in these in-between positions here. So what I want to show you is I can move this and you can see the little mark on the club will line up, say, with like nine iron right there. But what if I go down like this, you can see it goes down to five iron. So what you have to do sometimes is kind of overshoot and come back to get the in-between clubs. So you can get those in-between positions, but it's not quite as simple as going directly to it. You kind of have to overshoot, and I'm not sure exactly what the formula is, but what I've noticed here is if I want, say, something like it's three iron, what I'll do is I'll just kind of keep moving it around or overshoot and come back, and when I see that it lines up, then I'll go ahead and lock this back into place. You just rotate it all the way back around, tighten it down. Once it feels tight, I don't try to push it in knowing that this is polymer. You can see it's not quite aligned with the hosel there, but does that look like a three iron to you? And I will say that it looks maybe just a little bit steeper. One of the things I wanna show you here is if I loosen this up and go to the putter, which is the P right down there, and then lock it down, what I have noticed here is that it looks to be more than vertical. If you can see right down the shaft, it looks like the club head is actually canted over. It's kind of hooded here. <laughs> right so i actually don't think that is super accurate not that it absolutely has to be but when i am adjusting this what i kind of want for the putter is to go to the little slot right above the putter right there and now that looks lined up to me so honestly you want your putter to have maybe one degree aloft but i won't care if it's zero here but what i don't want it to be is already closed with the top coming over already because i usually give my putter just a little bit of shaft lean and so that's going to make it really close so that's why one or two degrees is actually just fine for me on my putter so you might have to do a little bit of experimenting you know this is meant to be precise but also durable so there's always a little bit of a trade-off there now if i go to something here like the seven iron that looks pretty good to me and what i will say is that what's surprising is that it really does look like a golf club especially when i put it down at a dress aside from that black polymer adjustment handle sticking out the back you know it really actually does have a pretty good golf club look and again because you don't have this made out of metal and so a big piece of metal hanging off the back here you know they could probably make it out of aluminum or something like that it actually feels pretty good now one of the things that personally i don't really need is i don't need it to compact too much like this if it were the length of a standard golf club that'd be fine with me i could probably put it in my trunk store it wherever i need to and take it with me even on trips so what i'm going to do here before i play around a golf with this bad boy is actually remove the head and just see if i can put in a regular graphite shaft because the more similar i can make this to a regular set of golf clubs and particularly my one length set of golf clubs because i don't think the lie angle changes here i think this could give me a very similar experience to my one length cobras which is really nice because a lot of times i will go to places you know go back home see my parents see some family or something like that and there's an off chance we might play golf but there isn't a good chance we'll play golf and i've traveled with my golf club so many times and not play golf it's kind of frustrating and then the few times that i've decided hey i'm not going to take them invariably someone's like hey we should go golfing so something like this i could have with me all the time and allow me to play golf with my slightly shorter one length clubs and keep my travel load pretty light so let's go ahead and start taking this apart all right now i've got the head off here and i've got the hosel cleaned out i went ahead and 
ground out all the old glue. And I will say that I do not think this is a 0 0.370 inch hosel. Now my reasoning for that is I have a standard iron shaft right here, even the tip is cleaned up. And if I go ahead and try to put that in there, it's not even close to fitting. In fact, what I have here is a, a new unstripped 0.335 inch driver shaft. And this looks like if I peel off the paint, it'll fit, but it will not slide in there this way. So, so this hosel, I think is actually quite a bit smaller than a standard iron hosel. And I would call it a driver sized hosel. So if you do want to reshaft it, you're going to probably have to use a driver shaft. So I'm going to use a driver shaft instead of an iron shaft. All right, so I took the head off, cleaned it. Looks like we're coming in at 245 grams, which doesn't surprise me. They're kind of splitting the weight here. I think a seven iron would be somewhere in the 270 gram range. A, a three iron is gonna be somewhere in the 220 or 30 gram range. So they're kind of just splitting the difference here. And that's what you gotta have to do. And in the single length club range, this is gonna be a little bit light. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use just a slightly heavier shaft than I do in my normal irons to make sure that the swing weight stays the same. All right, I'm excited about trying out this Divnik golf club now. Because it is something like 20 degrees outside, I'm actually going to do this in the simulator. So once it warms up, then we'll try it on the course. But I'm actually worried about a few things. First of all, one of the issues here is not... Divnik related, but because I have replaced the shaft here with a graphite shaft, I'm worried that it might not hold up because it takes a driver shaft to fit this hosel. And even though this is a stiff graphite shaft and should be pretty strong, you know, driver shafts aren't meant to be grounded out, you know, take divots and things like that. So hopefully this holds up. The second thing I'm actually a little bit worried about here is that, like I said, the precision on these movements here and lining up seem to be a little uh, optimistic, right? When it's on the putter setting, it looks like it is negative two degrees loft. When it's on the driver setting, it looks like it's on the putter setting. But if it's on the seven iron, I kind of think that's like a five iron. So that's going to be a little different. And then the other thing is, how does it hold up with all these little moving parts and things like that? I mean, just little wiggles on stuff. You know, is that going to, one, break, get loose, be inaccurate, lose a lot of power or distance? Yeah, I mean, I'm just kind of curious how that'll hold up. And then lastly, is this comparable to game improvement iron. I mean, are you going to get the distance that you might expect out of this? So I'm really curious. I'm not going to really warm up. I'm just going to play nine holes with this and we'll see how it goes. All right. So spent the afternoon at the simulator and played this club a lot more than I was expecting to and I've learned a lot about it so I want to now dive into the gory details with you first of all there is a lot of weight on this heel and that's just because of the way it's designed and the mechanism in here and what I realized is that because I was really closing this face very quickly and a lot of my shots were going way way left my natural shot direction is left anyway but this was duck hooking left and so one of the things that helped me a lot here was at address I was opening up the club face because it was closing over so quickly so it was open a little bit you know a few degrees open but that was helping me straighten out the ball flight the other thing that I realized and it dawned on me a little later is because of the extra weight here I think the center of gravity is actually really close to the heel here so the other thing that I was doing was lining up the ball right about here I was lining the ball right on the inside of this kind of like you would with a wedge because I don't know exactly where the sweet spot is but I'm guessing it's right along here and I was getting much better shots having the club face open a little bit and lining the ball up right here. That seemed to straighten out the direction for me and I was getting ball flights that were much more center. All right, now let's talk about distance with this, which is not a club for distance. Now, I will say that even though the club here actually looks like they put a lot of weight in the toe to kind of keep it low, to help maybe balance out the heavy weight back here, this is not a club weighted apparently for flight. And in fact, one of the things that I was doing here is I was realizing that when I was trying to play this in the driver three, four iron level, the ball was just coming out so low, it wasn't going anywhere. And in fact, the three iron shots were doing 90 yards on average and I realized here that this just doesn't have the technology that a lot of modern clubs do by 
putting in some extra tungsten weighting with flexible forge faces to get that ball to rise. And so it was just sending shots out at nine or 10 degree launch angles. And so they weren't getting high enough to really get that distance. And while that's not necessarily unique to the Divnik, a lot of people have dropped the three or four or even five irons out of their bag because they aren't going high enough. There's a reason that people aren't playing long irons and that's just because it's not getting enough loft. And so one of the things that I realized for me was that if I was setting this really to about a seven iron, which I really think is more of a five iron, that was kind of the best setup for getting the most distance. Now, the distance that I was getting was still only 150, 160 yards. So it wasn't flying super far, but that was the optimal setup for the most distance possible out of this. And even when I was teeing off, off a tee, I was finding myself putting this on the seven here, like I said, which I think is more of a five iron. And because it doesn't deliver loft through technology and waiting up here, I really think it plays more like a four iron or a three iron for most people. And so because of that, because you just don't get a lot of distance on it, because you're not getting driver or hybrid like distances, this really is not a club for your standard length 18 hole golf courses. The par fives were very long when your longest shot is only 150. 160 yards so it takes a long time to get there so where does the div nick shine well it's actually really in the short game and one of the things that i really liked about this is when you put it down here in the sand wedge and what i've found here is that i think the sand wedge is actually the notch beyond any marking so you can see here that the sand wedge doesn't line up there this actually performs pretty well and i was kind of worried about that because it's not really a deep club you're going to have sand wedges or those high toe wedges that's going to have a lot more meat behind it but this was actually playing pretty well and in fact i actually think i was getting more distance with this than i was out of my wedges now that's kind of a good and bad thing because it was kind of running a little bit more it was actually hard at least in the simulator to to get the ball to stop on the green they were kind of rolling out pretty far so i don't think it was putting necessarily a lot of spin on the ball but it also dawns on me that because of the heavy weight down here which you tend to have in a wedge because of the big hosel that the sweet spot more mimics what you would get on a wedge you can see actually where i was hitting a lot of those shots at the very beginning i was playing this just like my irons and lining it up but really right here is where you want to hit that ball and play it just like a wedge and so it's very natural to play this i think in the way that it needs to be played which is very similar to your wedges and i actually found that it was fairly easy to control and send those shots very straight and so as a wedge and short game replacement I think that this works actually really, really well. I do want to talk about the putter. I know most people don't really like these putter setups, but to me, it actually wasn't that bad. And again, if I move this down to the driver setting, this is basically a zero loft setup here. And I was kind of finding that these lines on the back here, which are to help you align, actually do work pretty well. Now, it's a little bit weird, and this doesn't have the weight of a putter, so you definitely don't have that high MOI. But what it does is it feels a lot like those old style, vintage, Calamity Jane type of blade putters. And so you kind of feel like you're smacking a little bit, like you're playing with a little tiny hockey stick. And I didn't find it that hard to lag the putts right because it's actually really light. I know a lot of people are going to really heavy putters and I think that kind of reduces the feel. This was actually fairly easy to putt. It was actually harder to line up the putts than it was to get the right lag, I felt like. So while it certainly isn't my preferred putter, it actually wasn't the worst putter I've ever used. All right, so what are the cons of this? Well, first of all, one of the things that I found out here is that even when you tighten this down, after you hit a ball, this always loosens up. So one of the things that I noticed is that this was always a little bit loose after a shot. So if you are going to play a five iron and then another five iron and then another five iron shot, because on those par fives I had to, I needed to remember to go back and tighten this down. So even though I tightened this down, I didn't want to over tighten it because it's just a little polymer switch there, but it always did seem to rock it loose just a little bit after every hit. So you have to remember to tighten this down. The other thing is when you are changing this, because you are using your thumb to push this, to loosen it up, to rotate it all the way around so that you can make the adjustments. And then you're pushing this all the way around and then tightening it back down again. What you do get is a little bit of Nintendo controller thumb. It's just, it's kind of hard on it. I wish it were maybe a little bit bigger. You know, it's not a very big paddle here. So maybe I wish it were a little bit bigger, but it's just one of those things that after playing 18 holes with this and adjusting this after each shot, you just start feeling that wear especially on my thumb and forefinger on my right hand where I'm making those adjustments so I'm not sure if there's any way to make this a little quicker easier to adjust but it's just one of those things that yeah after a few hours you're just gonna start feeling it on your hands you're just not gonna want to keep changing this a lot but 
I wish the transition between the clubs was a little easier. All right, so what are the pros of this? Well, if you are playing short par three courses, I think that this could be good for that. Courses where all the holes are maybe 200 yards or shorter, something like this could be perfect because you might wanna play those longer par three holes in two shots. A course like that might benefit from having two or three or four wedges in your bag. And so something like this can allow you to do that. It's definitely kind of a fun, quirky club, and it's easy to pack. Even with my shaft installed on here, it's just like carrying one club, so it's going to be easy to carry on a bus if you need to ride public transportation with it. It definitely does work, but it's all the trade-offs that you might expect. It's going to be a lot of mass. There's a lot going on right here on the hosel. It's just kind of the nature of it. You know, I don't know if material sciences and get to a place where something like this might be as good as any club that's manufactured, but there's just a limitation. It's just kind of an old school, old design that is meant to be fun and utilitarian and kind of give you an experience without having to carry a lot of clubs. Then it's meant to be like a game improvement, a really good striking club. The other thing is it's actually pretty affordable. I think this is actually a $200 club. So instead of getting a full bag of cheap clubs, you know, and then you got to get the bag and all that, you know, 200 bucks and you can have this in the corner of your apartment or dorm room. And if you want to go golfing, you certainly can. And it means it's pretty affordable for everyone. So it's not a wonder club that's also $500. I mean, a lot of really good playing golf clubs can be very expensive. I know PXG used to sell their irons a la carte and those could be three, $400 an iron. That's kind of crazy. So to me, this is perfect for someone who wants to put this in the trunk of the car, keep it there, maybe have it in the corner of your office, do a little putting, do a little chipping. Maybe you live in a small studio apartment. You just don't have a lot of storage space. Something like this could allow you to go golfing once in a while and have a lot of fun. Having something like this in your luggage or in the back of your car would allow you to just do some chipping, some practicing, hit the driving range randomly when you drive by one. Join your friends for spontaneous golf even when you don't have your full set of golf clubs. But I would say that the person that this probably works for best is the person who has limited space, doesn't golf very often, most of your access is to a local par three golf course, then this is probably something for you. Something like this will allow me to just have a nice casual walking day on the golf course, not have any superfluous clubs, and just enjoy myself and probably make it pretty entertaining. So the Divnik Golf Club, it's kind of interesting. It does work. So if you're intrigued by it, think it might fit your situation. Maybe you just want to experiment with it. I'll put a link to this club in the description below. Peter Von Panda, out. We can discover more and explore so much deeper. We can live better than ever thanks to Peter. Peter Von Panda. <laughs>